Hello, everybody, and welcome to the What Culture Horror Podcast, hosted by me, Ash Millman, joined today by Ben Roy Turner. Hello there. And also by our very first interview guest, which is Rob Savage, who is the director, writer, producer of Host. Hello, Rob. How are you today? Hey, I'm really good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on. What we're very excited to have someone to talk to about this movie, especially because it's your movie. Like we've uh, we've absolutely loved it here at What Culture Horror, so we're we're really really excited to talk about it. But oh, thanks for those so much. Who, uh, for those who maybe uh, haven't seen it or are like hearing all of this buzz around it on the internet at the moment, would you be able to give us like a brief little rundown of how you describe your movie? Yeah, so it's, it's a movie, it's a found footage horror movie that's all set on Zoom. It's about a bunch of friends who are locked down and they get bored of doing uh, Netflix parties and quizzes. Uh, so they, they do the next logical thing, which is to hire a medium and do a seance online via Zoom. And of course, it goes about as well as you would expect for a horror movie um, after one of them uh, disrespects the spirits in a, in a, in a pretty nasty way. Um, and yeah, and it's a movie that we made uh, during the lockdown. We made it we, from, from conception to release was 12 weeks uh, and it's available on Shudder to watch now. Mm -hmm. yeah, excellent. Um, so right for this sort of podcast I should say as well we're going to try and do spoiler free for kind of the opening and then move sure, into sure, more sure. kind of like sure. film specific stuff later yeah. on where we can ask you some questions and kind of open that up a bit with some spoilers but, yeah, mm. but for the opening um they're just going to ask you straight up the the easy question the one that yeah. always has to happen is what inspired you to make a movie and what inspired you to make a movie of this specific moment in time as well well it it, it actually came from a, a prank video that I did on my friends like I was I was um before the lockdown happened, I just moved into this new flat and I, and I became convinced that there was somebody living in the attic above my bedroom. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, because it was the only room that I couldn't check out because I didn't have a ladder to get up there. And I kept hearing these like footsteps above my, above my room when I was going to sleep. And, um, and then lockdown happened and, uh, you know, and I suddenly was trapped in a house potentially with an axe murderer living above me. So, uh, so I, decided to go, I decided to go and check it out. Uh, checked it out. There wasn't an axe murderer living there, but it gave me an idea because my attic, my attic was was suitably scary. Um, so I got all my friends onto a Zoom call uh, for you know for emotional support and told them I'm going to go and check out my attic. They didn't know I'd already been up there, and I I did this fake out prank where I pretended that there was a zombie living up there that jumped out on me and ate my face off and. Uh, <laughs> And I filmed, I filmed it, you know, they reacted as you'd expect. They screamed and almost called the police and, and I recorded it and put it on Twitter and it kind of ended up blowing up and becoming this little viral hit, you know, at the start of lockdown. It ended up getting millions of views and shared all over the place. And from there, like, from there, we kind of started getting phone calls about, you know, can you do something longer in this format? It's kind of the only thing that we can shoot right now. This was, this was right at the peak of, um, of the lockdown here in the UK. And, you know, and, 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 and um, I, so I called up, I called up Jed Shepard, who's the other, the other EP on this uh, project. And, you know, I've, I've worked with him a bunch more on other horror movies and he's always the first person I go to if I've got an idea. So I called him up and said, you know, I've got, got an idea to do a feature version of this. And we started throwing ideas around and we came up with this idea of the online seance. And that was really all we had when we started pitching it around. We pitched it to, to a bunch of places and everyone got quite excited about it. And, um, Shudder just had exactly the right attitude. We, our pitch to Shudder was basically a bunch of friends do an online seance. Something happens. It's going to be scary. We don't know what it is. Uh, you've just got to trust us. And they totally got on board with it and they totally supported us all the way through. So uh, then, we set, then we set off and we really did just figure it out as we went along. Um, we wanted to get it out as quickly as possible. So yeah. um, it, was, uh, it was a very intense 12 week process to get it out yeah no it sounds like 12 weeks is quite a fast turnaround for especially yeah. when you're all doing it like separate and away from each other and not in normal filming conditions yeah as well. yeah no it was it was bizarre but it was quite like I think it was also just a good way to, to put off lockdown boredom. I mean, even if the film had been dog shit, I think it would have been worthwhile because it kept us all busy and it was nice to, you know, everyone involved, a, a friends of mine who I've worked with before. So just a lovely atmosphere. Um, mm. Yeah. And, and we, ne you know, we never expected it to blow up in the way that it has. It must be so weird uh, making a feature film within lockdown and in the sort of like restrictions we've all had, jumping from, I imagine, houses to houses of people that you sort of knew and just anywhere that sort of fit. I, yeah. was, how was it trying to find locations on this sort of thing? And did you use, uh, did you use your own place at all or anything like that as well? 
Yeah, yeah. We we basically um, all, all the all the people who are in the the prank call ended up being in the movie because they were all actors anyway. I was I, um, and they're good friends of mine, and we were already doing these Zoom hangouts. So it was as simple as me jumping on a Zoom call with them and saying, "Do you want to make a movie?" And of course, they, you know, they jumped at it. And so the first thing I got them to do is I got them to film like little house tours of their places, so I could see what this kind of what you know like caroline had a creepy attic so i write that down i was like okay we can use that and yeah. you know Haley had a creepy hallway and, and so we started to kind of build the film around what we knew we had access to um and then at the same time there were certain things we want we knew we wanted to do that we couldn't do in the actors houses uh so we, we came up with clever ways to to hide transitions from house to house to make it feel like you were in one location but actually spread it across several so we had a house that we had access to uh, and there were there were stunt people living there there were stunt coordinators there were basically everyone you need legally to perform almost any crazy stunt you can think of all isolating within the same house so we didn't need to break lockdown so there's several points where we uh, we do a hidden cut and suddenly the actor is being played by a stunt performer dressed in the same costume and they'll do a crazy stunt and then we'll cut back and it'll be you know it'll be the actor again and you'll hopefully you know it'll hopefully seem as though the real actor has done it in front of your eyes i saw um, your live tweet session there was loads of talk about oh, yeah. the, um, the the bunny slippers being on people to make them look like they're in uh, different houses yeah. and stuff i think there were four or five pairs of those bunny slippers going around i, <laughs> I mean I, I i played emma for for the the bit where the oh without without spoiling but it, emma's <laughs> emma's emma's ki emma's kitchen is my kitchen so i had to don the, the bunny slippers and um and act out that's why emma's fingers suddenly get very fat whenever like <laughs> whenever i'm doing <laughs> Um, is there anything that drew you to like a seance in particular? I know you say that it was kind of the idea that you banded around and that you kind of settled on in the end, but why didn't you go with the, the zombie in the attic originally? What, what drew you to yeah. the seance instead? I think like ghost, ghost movies always scare me the most. And, um, and I think we wanted to, because we were doing something new with the format, um, you know, it's not, not, it's not revolutionary. I mean, I'm, you know, we, we love movies like Unfriended and Searching and things like this, you know, but we were doing something that was very, uh, very current, it, you know, using this this means of communication that we're all using. It was all set on Zoom. So we had this very current thing. We wanted to combine that with something that was very classic. So we weren't, so people had some grounding and they knew where they, they knew where they were in terms of the horror mechanics. And I think the, the, the seance really did that for us because it's, you know, it's kind of a horror story as old as time. Um, and it also, it's it's nice and amorphous with the rules you can kind of make the rules up as you as you go along zombies the rules are quite clear you know whatever werewolves the, the rules are clear and i think the nice thing about ghosts is you can kind of be quite surreal with it and you can um you can have it manifest in whatever way you choose and and um and we wanted to just be able to kind of any idea we we came up with we wanted to be able to throw it at screen I mean, that's yeah. why this idea works so much because it's it's so simple in a good way where you can imagine you doing it and the whole point of like whenever you have a sense in a movie or like a Ouija board or I'm a massive yeah. fan of paranormal activity so the idea of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of creepy and sort of ghosty like that I, I just need they're the only sort of horror films I can have to feel anymore I feel, I feel like I'm so desensitized so when I'm watching a film like Host and yeah. you sort of brought back straight back into it when we're all living this life right now it's so yeah. oddly unique and I think that's like a major appeal of how it's been like seen so far yeah yeah and it's you know it's it's useful that everyone is currently living pretty much the same situation and that's a great tool for a filmmaker because i know exactly what um you know I, like the the sandbox that we're playing in and what you know the, the 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 best thing you can do in a horror movie is make um make the audience feel unsafe in their homes when they go back after the cinema and, and now we're all basically you know stuck in our homes it was a great opportunity to kind of bring the terror to uh to, to be right in you know in in your own space your safe space hmm. did um did am i right in thinking that you did like a seance like an actual one over yeah. zoom beforehand to kind of practice it as well yeah yeah we, i i'd done a bit of work with mediums before for, as research for another film and so i knew I knew quite a few mediums uh, and I was kind of checking in with them and seeing, seeing what was going on during all the, the COVID stuff. And they, they said, Oh, it's, it's fine. We're basically just, we basically just moved on to zoom and that's how we're doing readings and that's how we're doing seances. So I hired, uh, I hired a medium that I knew to, to come on and, and do a seance with the cast just to kind of see how they'd react and to, um, and also just to get, get a sense of like, cause 
you know, mediums operate in real life in a much different way to how we're used to seeing them in, in films. It's much less over the top and, and melodramatic. It, it's, it's quite low key. And um, so I wanted to show Jed and, and Gemma, the other writers, um, you know, that kind of, that kind of aspects. I found that really interesting. And um, yeah, it was an interesting night because it started out like everyone was kind of taking the piss out of it. And then uh, like some spooky stuff started happening in Gemma's house, like a big book, a big book like came off her shelf. We basically, you have to, it, when you're doing a seance on Zoom, you have to go around one by one and you have to call out and, and welcome the spirits in. And you oh. say, you say, yeah, you say, oh. you say, you say spirits, I'm reaching out to you. Um, please give me a sign that you're here. And Gemma said that and literally as soon as she said, give me a sign, this book came flying off her shelf wow. and she jumped up, freaked out, started crying, had a panic attack. It was just just like you said. You would, to be honest, if like, yeah. oh, ghosts, come on in, please yeah. mess with a bookshelf. Exactly. My, my cupboard in my kitchen slammed and I freaked out and it was like, it was a whole thing. Um, but it was great material. So a lot of that went in the movie. Mm -hmm. That's horrible to know. I was, I was hoping you're going to be like, yeah, sure, we, we had a little practice seance and it was just, you know, some lines or whatever, and not, ah, oh, yes, actual ghosts came and tormented yeah, us. The yeah. Zoom seance is real. It might, it might still be open because our medium got cut off as well. Her internet died, so we had to shut down the, the seance ourselves and probably messed it up. So the seance is probably still going oh, on. Don't say you, that. No, it's we have probably, a Zoom call. It's probably passed on to you because it's all psychic energy. It doesn't matter. It can travel through oh. the brain. And Sorry, now everyone guys. that's also listening or watching this probably has it too. I just wanted yeah. to nerd out for a second because I wanted, yeah. I wanted to find out how um, the post all happened. Because after obviously, mm. people obviously didn't just film on Zoom um, and like hand yeah. over sort of thing. How did, was that a legit school nightmare? And like, was the all um, the posts done off site as well? Yeah, yeah. So the post was actually, the, the, the shoot went relatively smoothly, but the post was an absolute nightmare uh, and, and, and massive props to our editor, Brenna Ranga, who's just amazing and, and really is like, deserves all the praise for this film. Um, because what we did, we didn't actually, there's not a frame of Zoom footage in the whole, in the whole film. It's all shot on mobile phones that we, we got the cast to attach behind their laptops. So we were on a Zoom call. I was remotely... Uh, you know, I was able to, to to watch them on the Zoom call and talk to them. And, and that's, you know, that's how we kind of, um, I directed it from afar. But all the footage was with, with these individual phone files that then had to be sent to the editor and she had to rebuild the Zoom grids. And then, you know, as well, because it was it's all happening in real time, uh, you can't rely on cutaways or establishing shots or any of the things that normally as an editor you could lean on. Um, and then on top of that, you know, if you've got if you've got seven screens all you know all on screen at once, it's basically seven movies you've got to keep keep track of continuity, performance, yeah. lighting, um, and uh, you know, say if Radina is amazing on take one, but but Gemma absolutely smashed it on take three, she's got to cut those together within a Zoom grid and make it seem like it's all happening live and spontaneously. So it's, it was a real feat. Um, and she'd say, you know, she started cutting while we were already shooting and she'd send scenes back and forth and that would inform how I'd go on and shoot the next day's material. So it was a really, it was really nice in that respect that we were kind of working on top of each other. But um, it, uh, it just was like a, a, a house of cards. Like if you moved one little thing, the whole thing could collapse. I can imagine it being a quality control nightmare as well. Just try watching it back and trying to make sure every screen is sort of in sync and nothing goes out or anything like that as well. Oh, it's honestly, because we, because we literally, we finished this like a day or maybe, maybe two days before it aired on Shudder. And we were, we were, we were literally going frame by frame and making sure everything was in the right place, right up until the point we delivered it. It was, um, yeah, it was, it was an intense like week before we put it online. Two days before is like that. Is that normal for like the industry? Just kind of get it in right before the No, no, the no. no. <laughs> well, may, may, maybe, but, but, <laughs> may, um, but no, no, no. It was just because we had like, because Shudder announced, Shudder announced the date. It was out in deadline, you yeah. know, and, and, the, you know, we couldn't really go back on it. Um, but, you know, because another thing is like, we had to, all of the Zoom assets, like every time somebody comes up on screen and it's got their little name in the corner uh that had to be something that we'd make and position and put in place oh God, and yeah. and so there's actually like there's about four thousand individual little graphics that had to be individually positioned and we had to go through and make sure they were all in the right place and they weren't glitching like so it was really um i still get really nervous watching it just in case anything is out of place because there's kind of so many moving parts um even though it just kind of looks like we've recorded a zoom call 
uh, be, like considering all these different things that have kind of come together to make it like do you think you'd do this whole process again like would you do a film like this again or do you feel like it's just kind of a reflection of the time we're in and you wanted to kind of capture that and put it out as, uh, as that or, or do you feel like you want like host to I don't know if, I don't know I think it'd be a mistake to do to do host to directly just because there's been this response because I think host is so much the product of when it was made and the people who made it and everyone putting their energy into this, to, to doing this one thing and doing it fast and trying to capture what's going on right now. It, 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 you can't, you kind of can't force, force that, that energy. And it's, it, but at the same time, I'd love to do something in this same style. And I, you know, I love found footage movies and I'd love to do another found footage movie. And like <laughs> the thing, the thing that's, um, the thing that's really exciting is, is, is when you realize that shooting remotely like this, basically means that anyone with an internet connection can be part of your film. Like, yeah. I, you know, some, somebody on the other side of the planet who can do a very specific thing, who can do a crazy stunt for you, they could do that. I could monitor it via Zoom and it, could, and it sends, sends over the file and it could be in the movie by the next day. And that's kind of an amazing, that's kind of an amazing thing. And we, we, we capitalized on that a little bit. You know, everyone was based at different parts of the country, but I think there's, there's bigger and more ambitious versions of this that could be done. Mm. Um, so, you know, I think it's, it's, an, it's an exciting way of working. Yeah, definitely. I'd, like, I'd definitely like to see more of I feel like you guys have really like paved a way for something really interesting to come from it. Because obviously you've had like a taste of it with Unfriended and Searching, like you say, but this yeah. one was just so unique and kind of, again, particular to the time as well. I, I just, yeah. It's fantastic. Um, I think kind of leaning on from that and moving into kind of more specifics about the film as well so if we open up the spoilery bit here is everyone's warning that there's going to be spoilers and stuff what would you say um are some of your favorite films and ones that inspired you during this process because again during your live tweet thing which was great and had so many nice little easter egg details i saw so much about um different film clips that you'd shown mm -hmm. your cast to be like hey get scared with this or yeah. i'm going to incorporate this as an easter egg what, what are your favorite ones that you um, wanted to get in this film like fold them in definitely we there's there's a bunch i mean a lot of them a lot of them are, are, are honestly just straight steals like we stole we stole the um the polaroid bit at the end from uh, from this movie wait until dark which is a great kind of um i don't know it's not, not quite a slasher movie it's not even really quite a horror movie it's really intense or do we have one movie um and uh, and then there's a scare there's a scare that we that we kind of nicked from um, a movie that we love called Satan Slaves mm. this, this Joko Anwar film um, which is also on Shutter uh, the, sh the the bed sheet falling over the ghost mm. it's just it's just the best scare in in Satan Slaves and oh, horrible uh, horrible it's so horrible I mean they they do it they do it better than us because it's so unexpected but um, but that was our little nod nod to them and. Um, and what else? I mean, you know, we knew we wanted to do a levitation. We, we kind of wanted, we wanted there to be that moment where the audience has been watching for 20 minutes. They know that we made it in lockdown and they kind of think that, that they've seen all we have to show. And then we wanted a moment that, 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 that kind of blows their minds and, and, uh, and, and kind of, uh, kind of makes them see that there's no roadmap for this movie. They've got no idea where this is going and we, you know, we can keep stepping it up. And we wanted that last like 20 minutes to really feel like just this intense escalation that kept building and building and building. Um, and one of my big references for that was this movie uh, VHS, which is a fan footage anthology. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, which, we love VHS. <laughs> it's so, it's so good. And especially that last, the last one with the frat boys going to the haunted house that, that radio silence did. That was basically my reference for the pace of this and the way that the kind of energy that that film had, that kind of locomotive energy of just, we're going to keep throwing scares at you and we're going to keep upping it and upping and upping it. That was, that was the, the reference for the, uh, for the kind of finale and then we looked at um ghost watch as well was another one that we really um we really wanted to to touch on that that kind of like blink and you'll miss it did i just see that kind of scare that they do so well with pipes um and also you know and also we wanted it to, like i like i've always wanted to do something like ghost watch that really you know ideally that would trick people into thinking they're seeing something something happening for real i don't think you can get away with doing a ghost watch these days but we kind of hoped that because of the zoom format you might forget that you're not on this call and you might get immersed in a sim in a similar way to you know how i felt when i first watched ghost watch um so that was a big one host um, watch instead I host watch. Like dive in. <laughs> host <laughs> no. watch. yeah um 
so yeah so that, i mean those are, those are some of the big ones and then and, and to be honest there's so many little like references we we peppered in um there's a reference to uh night of the comet at the beginning the the, the really? passcode for the meeting yeah the passcode for the meeting is dmk from night of the comet which is a movie that we love jet jet shepherd's favorite movie did not clock that no <laughs> can, I, yeah. can i jump in on some of the kills quickly because you mentioned mm. from the ceiling and that was one of the points that really got me it, it felt like I, was, I was i was sort of as low down as you could be on the sofa just like yeah i, I can kind of see what's coming and then boom and they're the sort of ones <laughs> i really think are effective in the the found footage sort of um realm but the one yeah. that had me the most which was the clever use of the whole zoom aspect uh yeah. other than the the spooky mask which was yeah. I thought, the really good touches <laughs> the um i forget their names now but the one girl who has the background where she's walking past caroline them. caroline that, yeah when you when you clock that when you i think sometimes you clock just before the characters that wait a minute there isn't this uh, little background that keeps yeah. appearing and then, and then spoilers boom flies into the screen that was one that really gripped me and for, i and you could sort of see into her world for a bit and then she was sort of gone and taken out of the movie. Yeah. That's the sort of thing I loved about this. It's, yeah, that's one of my favourites as well. That was one of the earliest ones we came up with. Before we had any plot, we kind of, that was one of the, the ideas that we, that we knew we had to do something with. And, um, and I think the thing, the, the thing I really love about that, that we didn't even, I didn't even really consider until we put the edit together, is it's really spooky after you know that Caroline's died, that her background keeps looping and you yeah. keep seeing her kind of walking around like a spectre. It's very um, like creepy and sad and weird. It is like she's her own ghost haunting her own little yeah. like, section, isn't it? Um, I also, again, back to the live tweets because I, I wanted to grill you on this. Was yeah. the, uh, you mentioned um, foreshadowing. You and Jed mentioned foreshadowing yeah. that you put into the film, um, especially with like Caroline's death, with her smashing her face up and having the like face mask on. So it's kind of like a kind of target sort of thing. And um, Gemma making the false spirit at the beginning where she comes yeah. down to court. Yes. Um, what, what, are the, what are the other ones? Because I feel like there's some that are quite a lot more subtle and some that are a bit more visible. Well, but what's your roadmap to foreshadowing? Well, Radina's this kind of, uh, Radina's actually, actually, originally we had, we played more with her being muted. So hers is her muting herself in and out, which we don't really pay off quite as much as originally was planned. Um, but hers, I suppose, is her kind of, her kind of interaction with Alan and her, her being on mute and the rest of the gang um, talking about her while she's, while she's with Alan. Um, with Teddy, it's obviously the, um, the music box, which he then blows va his vape smoke around. And, and obviously the next time we hear that music box, there's a lot more smoke because we, we burn Teddy to a crisp. So that's a little mild <laughs> yeah. as well. Um, and, then, and then with Haley, it was really about dropping clues as to whether there was a presence in her house already. Which you know, you, it, there's no there's no definitive answer to it, but we there's a, there's a, a specific noise that we use whenever the, the demon is present, and we kind of bedded that into some of the early scenes where where um, creepy stuff starts to happen in very subtle ways, um, and that was kind of in our heads that was the the, the influence of the demon kind of um, interfering with the zoom signal. So um, so there's there's a little kind of Easter egg there about maybe there's maybe there's something in Haley's house that's been conjured from a previous seance that's just given license in this new seance to um, to, to manifest. Anything oh, inspired God, the horrible. design? Because <laughs> I, 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 I did anything inspired the design of the demon? Because I did pause it on the uh, one of the very last shots where it pops up for a frame or two, and I just seen I just wondered yeah. if that was inspired by anything or. Just um yeah i mean it was kind of like you know because because we we made this movie for pennies so it was kind of um the the original idea was was to have its mouth open up like the like the thing in blade 2 you know where it kind of opens up like a, yeah. like that like the the creature in jurassic park with the fan like um and we couldn't and we couldn't afford to do that so instead we kind of did a thing where it's it's a kind of demonic mouth was almost ripping through the human facade because you know in our minds this is a in our minds the demon is a tulpa which a tulpa is a kind of demon which is conjured by groupthink so yeah. the idea is um Gemma tells this story about Jack and puts this image in everyone's head and because they're all imagining the same thing that kind of becomes the mask that this demon is able to come through and wear and uh, and at the end it's almost as though the demon is breaking through the human mask that was our kind of concept behind it. Um, the demon is played by this great, this this great actor James Swanton, who's um, played a demon for us before in in other things. But he's um, he's he's uh, 
he's just able to get into these kind of nightmarish poses like the one that he does under the pool table in Teddy's house and um, he uh, his mum filmed all those in his in his house in the countryside and he sent them through to us and we cut them in oh, the, the little like snapshot cuts when Teddy's running around and keeps up I, oh, I, I re-watched it last night having like another little go through of it like to kind yeah. of see if it would scare me as much and all of the clips of the demon where he just kind of like flashes up I just I, I every time I forgot exactly where they were and each <laughs> one got me I was like oh oh <laughs> like you're getting lost in the house with Teddy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's because we because we wanted you know again like I, I I love like setting up setting up rules and then and then kind of breaking them later on or not breaking them but just like setting up a framework. You you know you think that this is a demon that's going to be invisible that's going to make you make the doors move. You think that you're watching it in the same way that you watch Paranormal Activity where you're looking for a very small little movement of a you know of a door frame or the sheet being being pulled off the bed. And then in the last kind of 10 minutes, we wanted to step it up and have the demon be much more physical and much more in your face. And I think, you know, I think people, people aren't, aren't quite ready for that because of the way they've been watching the film beforehand. So yeah, that, the, the, first one you, the first one on the stairs with Teddy always gets people, which I love. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, because of your lawyer, you talk about tulpas and that sort of thing. Did you kind of um, draw on what was like traditional ghostly lore or did you make up your own for this, like creating a mask and a demon coming through with it? Or was that taken from somewhere else? Or is it like common demon seance knowledge? No, the, the, I mean, the tulpa, like we spoke, to, we spoke to them, we did a separate interview with the medium just to kind of um, understand the rules of, and, and how, the rules would, how the rules would apply differently by doing it online um and you know we spoke to her a little bit about about the tulpa which is you know which has its own has its own set of rules the kind of demon conjured by group think but the the kind of mask analogy was one that jed came up with which we just thought was a nice tie into the to the face filters later on but also it's just it's kind of a nice way of explaining it it, it i i feel like I feel like the best horror ideas are the ones that you can explain in bite size mm. and that felt like the the, the cleanest way to explain um, how this demon was kind of manifesting. It's funny because the first time I watched it, because I also watched it twice, because uh, it's just so easy to watch because it's so short, uh, was um, I wanted to find out more about the demon. I felt like the first time I wanted to know more about the demon, but the second time I realized I didn't need to know by the end. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm always really curious. I think it's my problem. No, it's come from Paranormal Activity where every year I was like, you saw a snippet more of this weird cult these like but what are they doing where is it yeah, coming from? Yeah. and then by this you just you just need to know that these friends have kind of ruined the same seance by making up a spirit and then left. they've just fought they've just fought with something that's, that's yeah, be, yeah they with something that's beyond beyond understanding and they 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 shouldn't have i mean that was that was all we thought that the audience needed to know and i think the the runtime really helps with that because i think maybe if it was a two-hour movie you'd want a bit more backstory and you'd want a bit more of an understanding as to how this demon operates but our kind of rule of thumb when we're making this is just what's the most authentic way that we can that the characters would react and what's the most authentic way this can play out and in reality i'd imagine maybe I'll, maybe I'll find out if I was getting pursued by an evil demon, I probably wouldn't find out why I'd probably be dead before I could figure <laughs> it out. So we, we just kind of went with that. And, um, you know, we didn't, we just, we just never once, once the film got started, it was really important to me that it never let up. And I think anything, anything that, that was too over exposition -y would have, would have just ground us to a halt. So we, so we did away with any of that. Did you um, always plan to kind of have it as this hour long chunk or was that just kind of leaned in on because of the Zoom format? It was, yeah, it kind of came from the Zoom format. I mean, we just thought it would be really funny if the characters were about to get eaten at the end and then it, the free call cut off. Yeah. Just thought, that was, <laughs> thought, that, thought that was a good gag. And um, it really tricked me I, as well, by the way, the credits, how you done them there. And I was just sitting there watching it, it's like, what's going on now? And then I oh, did, yeah, like, yeah. it was the credits and I felt so stupid yeah. this time. Yeah, it's... Um, no, that was that was that was really fun. Dan, Dan Hawkins, the guy who made all our Zoom graphics, um, made that and did a really great job with it. But um, no, I mean the, the reason it's so short really is because we, when we pitched to Shutter, I, I honestly didn't know how much good material we'd be able to get out of filming remotely. I had no idea. I didn't want to promise them a feature length film. Uh, and originally, originally, I I made an agreement with Shutter that it, the the minimum it could be was half an hour because I thought we might even struggle to hit half an hour. Um, and then actually, you know, it, 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 there, was, there was a cut that was about an hour and a half that, I mean, it wasn't very good, but there was a cut that was feature length. And then 
we kind of just found the length that the movie wanted to be and that, you know, because it's a streamer that we were working with, um, it, it, the movie was just able to be the length it needed to be, which was great. And we weren't trying to pad it out or, or cut it down. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think just kind of uh, drawing our own like shorter podcast together, putting the, yeah. the time limit on it, that's me trying to link this together, being like, ah, oh, <laughs> move from one question to the, the shorter time limit. Nice, um, nice. I'm going to ask you our kind of last question, which is sure. um, what's on the horizon for you? What do you think you're going to do next? And is horror kind of what you're going to stick to as a genre? Or do you think you're going to branch out into other little things along the way? Now you've had host and this like excellent setup. Yeah. I mean, I love horror. I think horror, like, it, for, for me, for me, I, I don't see myself working outside of genre. I love horror, sci-fi, thriller. I think there's there's just such um, there's such an opportunity to to tell more interesting stories within a horror framework. I feel like if you know when you're making a horror movie, you're basically signing a contract with the audience saying, "I'm going to scare you, but everything everything else is you know everything else is going to be new and fresh." And if you so long as you um, so long as you don't let them down on the scare side, I feel like a horror audience will go along with, um, you know, much more interesting characters, much more interesting situations than you would if you were making a conventional, a conventional movie. Like we're, we're doing a movie of, um, of my short film, Dawn of the Deaf, which is all about the deaf community. And the fact that, the fact that we've got mainstream, you know, we've got, we've got proper backing to make a movie with deaf characters, deaf actors, exploring the deaf community, but it's also going to be fucking scary. And that's what, you know, so long as you fulfill that side of the bargain, you can kind of um, do a lot of interesting things in horror. Um, the, another, another project that we just announced is a film we're doing with, with Sam Raimi producing, which is, um, which is amazing because he's like one of my favorite filmmakers yeah. ever. That's and, exciting, uh, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. And we've, we've been developing that for a few months and, um, you know, hopefully if the world doesn't um, set on fire, uh, we'd be able to do that next year. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, it, you know, and, and again, I, I'd, I'd love to make some more stuff in the, in the fan footage genre. Yeah. Please make more fan footage because I've kind of tapped out of that, that and zombies. I've, I've sort of used everything up now. So I need more. So anything. Well, Dawn, of the, Dawn of the death is zombie. So, so hopefully we can surprise you there. I saw that on the IMDb and I would love to check that out. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I've probably got to run onto this next one, but um, yes. Right. Thanks, Thank thanks you so much. much for coming. No, that cool. was really fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Right, so Rob has had to dip. Hopefully he has not been taken by some nasty Zoom demon, but that has been our interview with the lovely Rob Savage, director of host, writer, producer, all sorts of lovely things for the wonderful host, which gets a hearty recommendation from both of us. Ben Roy, tell us all your love for hosts. Let's have a little finish on some love for host. It's just it's such a nice surprise to have not only... Another great horror movie this year. It seems to be the year of horror, but also a found footage movie. The, the ones that I crave so much. Right around the time I was thinking, should I really watch Paranormal Activity? And now this has come along and sort of quenched that first me. And I, there's something about the runtime being so short and there's something about it being on Zoom and it being on this like sort of set in lockdown where we all are right now that I can't, I can't recommend, cannot recommend it enough really so. Yes, it is the, the, the heartiest 2020 movie of yeah. them all. But in the meantime, you can catch me on Twitter at Ash Millman and you can catch Ben Roy on Twitter at... At Ben Roy Turner. And you can catch What Culture Horror at W Culture Horror and uh, talk to us all things host and horror movies and lovely stuff there. Let us know what you think of host. Let us know what you think of this interview because we'd love to do some more talking to more horror lovely people as well. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you again next time. Bye. Boo.